welcome back or if this is your first time just welcome um, I'm going to be trying my hardest to do a no spoiler book review over the book and the novella beautiful disaster and a beautiful wedding by Jamie McGuire so first things first um Beautiful Disaster has a bunch of spin-off series based off of one of the main characters' family, um, Travis Maddox. Um, it's also known as the Maddox series. So some people, you might be um, coming to this book review because you've read the other series, or you just clicked on it because you thought it'd be interesting. Either way, it's fine with me. But... Um, if you haven't um, seen any of my other book reviews, I do not like reading prequels unless the prequel was the first thing I read. Um, or um, I don't like reading, uh, which is, it tends to be a thing lately. Um, these books that are coming out about the original book, but through the other main character's perspective. Unless um, the book has it where it's kind of stacked on top of each other, like each main character's perspective per chapter, I don't read it because it seems kind of silly to read the exact same story just from another person's perspective who was there, even if it is the main character. It just seems kind of boring to me. But anywho, um, so if anyone wondering, no, I did not read Beautiful Oblivion because from what I got from the synopsis, it's basically from one of the main characters' perspective, the exact same story. So I passed. But either who, I still loved Beautiful Disaster. The way Jamie McGuire fits so much content in this amount of pages, honestly, is astonishing and which made me really love it. I mean, it was definitely a page turner. I didn't realize how much I was going through the book until I got to the end and I was like, oh, I'm done. Um, a Beautiful Wedding isn't required, but after reading Beautiful Disaster, you're going to want to read it because that's, that, that's basically why I read it. Um, if you just want to read A Beautiful Disaster, it's perfectly fine because how she writes it, you get plenty of closure in the end anyways. Um, but if you're kind of a nosy reader like me, again, this is me speaking without trying not to give any spoilers. But if you're a nosy reader like me and you just kind of want to know the details of that closure, then yeah, just go ahead and buy these two together. Um, but diving into it, um, Beautiful Disaster is basically about Abby Abernathy, I know, the most basic generic name, but it works for her. <laughs> and um, she's just that typical good girl. She doesn't drink. She doesn't, you know, do anything bad. How I envision her, she's like, you know, one of those people who wears dresses everywhere and sandals and just reads in her spare time. She doesn't go out clubbing or anything like that. So when her path tends to cross with this guy, Travis Maddox, who is everything opposite of that, you know, player, um, fighter, violent, drinker, smoker, all of the above, that's Travis. So it's your typical good girl meets bad boy story um, where, as you guess, she tries to, you know, well, not really. She doesn't really try anything. He, of course, tries to better himself because, you know, he starts liking her. But what's refreshing about this story is Abby does not want to be anywhere around him. She doesn't like him. She doesn't find him cute. She doesn't find him funny. Their paths cross based off of coincidence and honestly fate. Um, to not give anything away... Their basic beautiful disaster thing that happens was based off of a bet. Um, you know, when you lose a bet, you gotta pay up for it. And that's basically how their lives commingle to the point where a beautiful disaster emerges. I'm not gonna say anything beyond that because it would be spoiling it. 
but I do love how um, Jamie pretty much just she fits a lot a lot of content in there she really does and the titles of her chapters are hilarious um, it's very relatable whether you're um, whether you're a teenager or old everybody has gone through that moment where you make a bet thinking it's a sure thing and then you lose that bet and you have to deal with the consequences um, I love Abby's character because you think you know her up until the middle of the book and then you realize wow I didn't know her um, same goes for Travis um, you think you know oh I know a bad boy like that or I know a guy you know a terrible guy like that but then you know you get to know him and you kind of understand a little bit why he is the way he is um, she doesn't she doesn't have a lot of fluff Jamie Jamie McGuire does not fill this book with fluff which I feel like for this story it works there wasn't a like she didn't go into great detail about environment or trying to paint a picture because as you're reading the interactions and what's happening it's the the environment's already painted for you so you kind of have a mental picture in your head of what you're seeing what you're reading um a lot goes on in this book that I never expected to happen based off of purely just the plot and the fact that this happens on a college campus. I went to college and nothing like this ever happened in any way, at least that I was aware of. So the fact that a lot of this stuff happens on a college campus kind of makes it a bit humorous. Um, if you're into, you know, a love story, which a lot of people are, um, I would definitely say pick up this book because after reading the After series and Twilight and um, just a lot of other books, I was really in the mood for another romance because I was like, oh, I was like, those books were kind of cute in a way. Let me find another one. I stumbled on this one on Amazon and it didn't disappoint. It really didn't. Um, I ended up reading it in three days. Like I said, it was a page turner. Um, after I read it, I was like, wow, amazing story. Oh, another thing that I like that um, McGuire does is she really, she's really good at um, describing the emotions that Abby, the main character, is feeling. So, like, to the point where you feel her, like, you end up feeling her butterflies. You end up feeling... Um, her nerves or her anxiety or her worries or anger or frustration um, through every scenario that she goes through. Another thing that I love is that um, she didn't make Abby as typical as you would think. Um, her character was very refreshing in, in regards to being in a, in, in, intertwined in a love story because most love stories, you know, the girl is depicted a certain way, um, basic or gen in a generic way, where you're kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, it's a good thing to read, but you know, sometimes a change up is good. And I feel like Abby's character is that perfect change up because when, like, when basically her identity truly starts to unravel throughout the book. Um, you start realizing, wow, okay, there's a lot that meets the eye. Now I see why Abby is the way she is. Same with Travis. Um, the supporting characters are amazing. Um, Travis's uh, best friend and then Abby's cousin are awesome characters. Um, I'm sad that those characters didn't really get a spinoff, but Travis's family does. Eh, okay. I would have loved to see kind of... Well, it's up to my knowledge. To my knowledge, the supporting characters don't have a spinoff. From what I've seen. I don't know if recently she's released it or maybe I missed it in my research. But the supporting characters of um, Abby's cousin and um, Travis's best friend, I haven't seen anything. And I would have... Oh, that's one spinoff I would love to see where their paths leave because they are so 
involved and included in Travis and Abby's story that I'm like, what happens there, you know? But again, um, I don't want to keep rambling. Um, a beautiful wedding is a good one. I do not want to tell you what it's about. I want to kind of leave it in the air. Uh, what this could talk about it could be a, could be about you know Abby. It could not. It could be something that she's involved in. Who knows? But there's a hint for you. It has to do with Vegas. Um, this one was really good. It was really short, which makes sense why it's so short because it's only talking about just an event. It's not a spin-off or anything. It's more of just talking more in depth about a part that happens in the end of this book. So, I hope that makes sense without spoiling anything because I don't want to spoil anything. I want you to read it. Um, I will put a link in the below for where you can find the book. Also, I will also put a link in where I got this awesome shirt made. But other than that, I hope this answers any questions. If you were already part of um, the beautiful disaster, you know, series family, you just kind of want to know more in depth on what's going on with beautiful disaster. Or if you were just in a book standstill and didn't know what to read and was like, hmm, I want a good book recommendation to get my book choosing flowing, then I hope this inspires you to want to check out Beautiful Disaster. Or if not, I hope you just had a good 13 minutes or less time hearing me talk about these two books. But again, thank you for at least watching and subscribe. Thanks.